Pobre Man Teddy Kegstat. Folks, we talk to Teddy every Wednesday at 40 past the hour here on the Morning Market Kickoff. You can reach Teddy every trading day at his website, forex-trading-unlock.com. Teddy Kegstat, we got the first real crude pullback going on today in the last few days, man. Good morning. Good morning, Tommy. Yeah, the markets are uh, pretty interesting with everything since what's happened since we uh, talked last week, that's for sure. It's always a wild week, man. I, uh, you know, I had been looking for a little bit of a crude pullback at some degree. Um, but what do you think of the action of 102 right now? If we could kick it off maybe with crude, um, maybe price levels you might be looking at in the in this futures. But uh, 102 right now, quite a pullback from 116 and 123 even eight days ago. Yeah, actually, it's a, quite a sell-off in a very short amount of time. So um, I I wouldn't read too much into this slide. I would think that this is probably where it's bottoming out. I don't, may, we may see a little bit more pressure. Um, <clears throat> I don't think it's very sustainable in the long term. And uh, another thing that we are kind of noticing that I looked at is the divergence between gasoline futures and uh, oil futures. So gasoline is not breaking like crude oil is so you're not going to okay. see the pumps drop you know like sure. especially we've had a, a 22 dollars sell-off in just a, a period of like you know six days you know i mean the, the pumps have come back a little bit but they're not coming that much back you know yeah. so because if you look at gasoline futures they're not retrade they're they're definitely um hitting new lows too but not even not remotely as severely of a slide you know so i think you have to kind of watch how the gasoline futures work too if there's not follow through to the downside, then I think crude's pretty much going to start to find a bottom and probably get a bounce, you know? So I think it's just an overzealous uh, sell-off right now. I mean, the reality is, is that we have supply issues, demand. I mean, you have a lot of news-driven stuff because all of a sudden the news and the Fed is starting to talk about recession. Well, we were talking about a recession coming to hit us already six, seven months ago, you know? So that's just finally getting the news you know, speak, if you will. So I think you're getting the market jitters from that one, you know, like buying bonds because of what's yeah. going on in the short run. Uh, but you're still coming off a brand new lower low in the Treasury bond market, you know. So and uh, the, the big thing is, too, is if we, we would still need another like three handle rally to get above 130. 13803, that would take out the last swing, lower swing high in the bonds. We still have a little ways to go, you know, now with yeah. the, with the Fed speak, Fed chairman speaking today and tomorrow, remember that last week he came up with follow through after the um, the, the, the initial uh, three point uh, three quarter point rate hike, saying that they're aggressively going after this. Well, unless he's going to all of a sudden change his tune and, and say like, oh, we're, well, you're not going to start cutting rates. What are you going to do? Is say you're going to stop raising rates to see how things now pan out well that would be a big flip-flop in your in your decision process especially when he shocked the market saying yeah screw you i'm going to keep raising really aggressively no matter what so i don't think he can change his tone and if he does that really gives us credibility you know it turns it to swiss cheese you know as far as what's he going to do in the future you know so i think that right now you know, interest rates, they're bouncing, you know, so it's 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 normal to come off of the low, you know, with profit taking, you know, especially with this volatility. Uh, so I wouldn't read too much into it, you know, and as far as with the dollar, too, we had a little bit of divergence It's getting a little dicey. So remember last week when we talked, I told you how I, re how I reversed. I, was, I got short the yen, the yes. U.S. dollar Swiss. What happened in the, in the two days since we spoke last week? That was such a drop, you know. And that came just down to where we um, had found support just a few weeks earlier, you know. So now I'm back on that on the uh, on the dollar rally mode. If you look at the dollar index, it's wedging, you know. Whereas you've had some spiking, you know, a little strength and corrections in some of the other markets. The euro really hasn't bounced. The pound really hasn't bounced. You know, the major the major move that you had really so far was in the U.S. dollar Swiss, you know. So I would key off of that one because. As, as race right now, right now they're buying the bonds. You know, it's the in vogue thing to do because of the news play. How long is the market going to support that? Market's going to do what the market's going to do. You know, so if it's if it's only a, a news driven rally going on right now, I would say that you're going to see the dollar start to rally again very soon because this is just a profit taking move. It's not sustainable. 
Yeah, I mean, I had a chart. I was jumping through the charts as you were kind of jumping around there. And the 30-year, I mean, yeah, it's quite a bounce, right, in terms of from 131 on last Thursday to 135. But, man, I put this thing on a quick daily, and you were trading at 160 um, just over three months ago. So you trade down 30 full right. points in the 30-year. Just a remarkable move, man, um, in the bonds in the notes, of course. And yeah, jump into the yen real quick. So I want to get to this one. You referenced mm -hmm. it. Um, excuse me, let me just jump, jump onto the chart. Where sure. are we? Come on. Um, I'll stay. There we go. Uh, so yes, to get exactly where we were, which I want to pull up on Wednesday, you trading about 134 and change, 135 when we talked to you last week. You dive all the way down to 131.48 on Thursday. Um, mm -hmm. And now we've actually gotten just slightly back <laughs> above that level to 135.86. Um, yeah, new so, highs yesterday, yeah. And so you're looking for bearish action there and the yen continuing with that sell-off, even even with the bounce to, to kind of new recent highs, or where are you there? No, now, like, like I said, last week I for reversed the dollar. gears. Okay. And with that volatility in the Swiss, that made me, when it hit that, that one was so oversold, and then I reversed okay. gears again. So now I'm... Long U.S. dollar Swiss, long U.S. dollar yen. I'm long, which yesterday I got squeezed. I was on a short squeeze a little bit, and that's now I'm finally long the yen again. Um, I'm short. I mean, excuse me. <clears throat> I am uh, short the euro U.S. dollar, short the pound dollar, short okay. the Aussie U.S. dollar, short the New Zealand dollar U.S. dollar. So. You know, yeah, I'm riding. I'm looking right now for a dollar bounce. I think that as the the index is wedging because of the divergence that's happening, the profit taking moves. I mean, the Swiss was the one that was the most volatile. You know, but markets go yeah, out, but they move. come in. You know, so I think that if you look at how support held a few weeks ago, this was is another good support area. And if that is the case, we're going back to parity now probably parity quickly with the U.S. dollar Swiss, especially if the interest rate market turns, you know. So I think you probably have another three basis handles in the bonds before you're going to run out of gas, you know, because that 138 level would be key, you know. So if that's if we can stretch it up there, I would say that probably tomorrow is when you're going to see after the Fed, uh, the chairman is uh, done squawking around and questioning that that's when all of a sudden you're going to see the trade come back and the dollar is going to swing back. Interest rates are going to start going up again. And that's going to definitely drive the other currencies down against the dollar. And where do you like, let's say, and this is like the million dollar question, of course. So you're looking for what? That'd be higher yields, right? You're going to get the bond to, to trade lower in price mm -hmm. uh, after maybe you get the rise to 138. Um, mm -hmm. So you see it challenging that 131 low and, and going below that level. Where do you see Absolutely. like maybe that 10 year, right? Because it's, it's it's a nice little pullback in terms of yield, but we've risen so much. We started the year off at 1.5%. Sure. We're, we're sitting at 3.15 now in the 10 year. We were up to almost 3.5. Uh, we mm -hmm. got about 30 seconds well, on the 10 year, just because that's what people follow most. Sure. What are you looking for in like the next few months for the 10 year as we're at 3.15 right now? Uh, you want a number, so I'll give you that number right Or now. a range. I know. I want everything. Sure. Man. I want it all. <laughs> I know. I know. All right. For the 10-year, I see it trading down around 108 to 105 as far as the handle basis in the next couple of months, if not by the end of the summer. Perfect. 108 to 105. We're sitting right now at 117. We had been as low as 114. Yeah, higher yeah. rates are coming, man. Teddy, thank you so much for taking the nine minutes with us, man. We appreciate the right. education as always. And we'll talk see to you, you next week, next man. See you next week. Thanks, Daddy. Take care. Take care. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back to finish up the show.